Um, so here um, I'm, I'm Fang Li, and I'm a PhD candidate at UTD. Um, so here is my presentation for our work, which is a graph-based interpretation of normal logic programs. So since this work has been accepted as an extended abstraction, uh, so here is a presentation for it. Um, at the beginning, I want to share the, uh, some background of the ASP and the motivation for this work. So, so ASP is answer set programming, which is a declarative paradigm that extends logic programming with negation as failure. So basically, just the um, we put we have not, um, I mean, which based on the normal logic programming. So the basic form is like this. It says the rules, um, like P colon dash Q1 through QM or not and not R1 through not Rn. So P is the, the head for that rule. And the colon dash is reading like if. So that means if we have um, like Q1 or uh, through QM means Q1 through QM are true. Also, we have not R1 through not Rn, which means that we don't have the facts which supports R1 through Rn, right? So this is the form for answer set programming. Mm, so for, for now, the, um, there is a thing called uh, gilfan lifshitz method, which is a guess and check alg algorithm to find the answer sets. So the process is like that. Given an answer set of S for each P in S, we delete all the rules whose body contains not P. After this, we delete all goals of the form not Q in the remaining rules. And then we compute the least fixed point L of the residual program. So if S equals L, then S is an answer set. Basically, it's, um, we will just guess an answer set which is a stable model. And we try to um, perform the Gilfan Lifters method to verify whether this answer is correct or not. Here is an example. So suppose we have P if Q, not R, R if not P, and also if R, uh, no, S if R, then we guess the answer set will be RS. So that, that means we guess RS is a stable model. Then, um, so the residual program is we have R if not P, because see the, for the first rule, it has not R there, right? But our guess has R. So we remove the rule which has not R in the body. So we only have two rules left, which is R if not P and S if R. And our least fixed point for this one is gonna be RS. So if we compare the residual program with our guess, so they are identical. So we are done. That means RS is, uh, is an answer set for this program. So this is the um, background for the ASP. And so the mo motivation for my research has been like this. So when I first joined um, our lab, so I was new to ASP. I found it's a little bit hard to get started. And then I was trying to draw graphs to help me understanding those concepts. And after that, I found that um, why not representing ASP program with the uh, graphs? And then I tried to find that way, then I succeed. Um, I was able to show the uh, ASP programs with graphs. And suddenly I realized that why not solving the ASP programs with the graphs, since I already able to um, show, to represent um, it into the graph. And then I was looking for, is there any other project and already done this? Then I found nobody done it. Then I said, okay, why not do the research um, in this direction? So um, here is the uh, method for me to represent the ASP program with dependency graph. We call it the um, CNR graph. So first thing is, um, let me introduce the conventional dependency graph. So a dependency graph uses nodes and directed edges to represent dependency relationships of an ASP rule. 
For example, if we have the program P, if Q, not R, not P, it's, we're, we're going to have those, uh, this graph in, uh, on the right. So see here, we have the node PQR, right? Which is a circled character. And then we also have the edges. So for example, we have the one edge goes from Q to P with the positive sign. That means it's P if Q. And we also have the P, uh, an, another edge, negative edge pointing from R to P. That means P if not R. And also we have the um, edge goes from P to itself, a negative one, which represents the rule P if not P. So um, you may al already find the problem, right? So for this kind of dependency graph, how about we have another program which shows in the square? If we have two rules instead of one, we have P if Q and not P. Now we have another rule, which is P if not R. So we'll have the, the identical um, dependency graph for these two programs, right? Apparently, apparently these two programs are not equal, right? So that means we have to find a way to solve the conjunctive relationship representation by the conventional dependency graph. And by doing this, and we found that we can use some something um, to represent the con conjunction node. So we use an uh, um, artificial node to represent the conjunction of sub goals in the body of a rule. See here for program one, it's P if Q not R not P, we'll have the CNR graph in the above, right? See here, we, we, we have the uh, QRP all pointing to the artificial node, which is a black C. And then that black C pointing back to P, which, which represents the conjunctive relation um, uh, based on P, Q, R, right? And also for the programming two, we have uh, two rules. For the first rule, which we have the conjunctive relation is consists of Q and not P pointing to P, right? So we only need to um, use a black C node, which is a conjunction node to represent the conjunctive relationship from P and not from Q and not P. So we have two edges, um, Q, C, or P, C. And then from the conjunctive node C pointing back to P. And also for a second rule, not R, um, to P, we just use a, a direct edge, right? See here, by using this way, we are able to distinguish those two programs. But the problem is here, um, the black C apparently is not, not the uniform way, right? As other nodes. See the white nodes and the black nodes, they're kind of two different kind of type of nodes. So we're not able to perform any reasoning uh, uniform reasoning based on the, the different type of nodes in the graph, right? So we have to somehow transform black C to the white C, right? Here um, is the converting uh, CNR to dependency graph. Excuse me. So um, what we're gonna do is we simply negate all the edges related with C. See here for the, um, uh, the graph, if we want to change this black C to white C, we simply negate all the edges involved, right? We, we change the edge QC to negative, RC to positive, and also C to P to negative. And then we're done with that. The proof is actually we simply uh, made use of the, the Morgan's law, right? So the proof is like if we have P, if, uh, C, if C and black C, if Q not R, then we will have P if not white C. And also the white C is not Q and not C, uh, the C is R. Then um, we just negate it. So that means we use the Morgan's law to um, negate the conjunctive relationship and to change it to the disjunctive ones, right? So in this way, we are able to uh, represent the ASP rule with the conventional dependency graph. So for the constraint encoding, so for the ASP program, we'll have two kind of constraints. One is the headed one, and another one is the headless one. For the first one, like program four, we have P if not Q, not R, not P. 
See, we have P in the head and also not P in the body. So that means anything in between cannot be satisfied at the same time, right? This is a way for us to represent the constraints. And another way is we have like um, colon dash, not Q, not R in program five, which means that not Q and not R cannot both be satisfied at the same time. So this, this is another way for showing the constraints. So we'll, for the first one, we directly um, represented use the um, CNR dependency graph with no problem. For the second one, since there's no head, we simply use a false node to represent the head, right? Okay, here is the, um, the actual algorithm for our um, work, this work. We use this graph-based idea to interpret, uh, interpret the normal logic programs. The idea is we use um, this idea to solve different semantics with one ASP solver. So what does it mean? We have the, for example, we have the well-founded semantics. We have the co-stable model semantics. And also we have the ASP, which is stable model semantics. But um, for now, for each kind of semantics, we have to use different um, solver to solve it, right? So for the uh, Klingo, for example, is, it is ASP solver. So if we want to solve the well-founded semantics, um, I think it's not so uh, straightforward to do it, right? So our work is we somehow represent the program into our graph representation. And then we augmented that program with our interpretation rules to make it be able to solve by ASP solver. But this program uh, based on according to the different um, interpretation rules, we're gonna to solve it in under different semantics, for example, well-founded semantics or co-stable model semantics. The step is, is we uh, firstly, we represent the normal logic program with a CNR dependency graph. And then we retranslate the graph into an equivalent normal logic program. After that, we augment um, this program with corresponding interpretation rules, which is a kind of an interpreter, right? And then we use an ASP solver, for example, the Klingo, to solve the augmented program. An example of the translations like that, suppose our program only have one rule, which is P if Q not R. And then we will uh, represent this rule as a conjunctive uh, CNR graph. So which we have three nodes, right? P, Q, R, and we have three edges, which is from Q to the conjunctive node, and as, which is negative, right? Also we have the R to a conjunctive node, which is positive, and also we have the conjunction node pointing to P, which is negative, right? And uh, after we this trans translation, so if, for example, we want to solve this program under the semantics of co-stable model, then we're gonna augment this with the interpretation rules of co-stable models. So for, uh, also if we want to solve it under the well-founded semantics, then we just need to change the interpretation rules with our well-founded semantics interpretation rules. So we're gonna solve the well-founded model um, based on this. So first thing is the co-stable model. So co-stable model semantics is similar to the stable model semantics, except in the last step of the Gilfond Lifters transform, instead of finding the least fixed point of the residual program, we compute its greatest fixed point. For example, if we have the program P if Q and Q if P. So for the stable model semantics, we only have one model, which is the empty model. But for the co-stable model semantics, we're gonna have two, right? This one is uh, none of them are true. And another one is both of them are true. This is a co-stable model. And so here is the, the interpretation rules for the co-stable model. Um, here is, and for time being, we don't go deep into this uh, rules. So basic idea is by augmenting this, this rules, we're gonna able to solve the program um, in the under the co-stable model semantics. For example, if we put this program, like a P if Q, Q if P, and augmented with these rules, 
and we're gonna get if we uh, pass it to the Klingo Klingo solver, we're gonna get two models. One is PQ, another is Q, uh, empty. Without uh, augmenting with, without augmenting the co-stable model interpretation rules, where this Klingo will uh, only get the empty model for that. It's a stable model, right? The, the same idea for the well-founded semantics. The well-founded semantics can be viewed as a three-valued version of the stable model semantics. Instead of only assigning propositions true or false, it also allows for a value representing ignorance, which is unknown here. So any atom in an even loop or an odd loop will be considered as unknown. The example is for P if not Q, Q if not P, Q is an even loop, right? So for the stable model semantics, we're gonna have two models, which is P uh, or uh, Q. That means only one of, of them can be true, right? But under the well-founded semantics, we are gonna have the both of them unknown, right? P is unknown and Q is unknown. So the same idea, if we wanna solve this program, P if not Q, Q if not P, and under the well-founded semantics by Kalingo, we're gonna to have to append this kind of interpretation rules, which is a little bit longer than the co-stable uh, co model ones because we have to deal with a lot of, uh, for example, the, the unknown, right? It is like three pages in this presentation slides. Um, yeah, but we're uh, time, for time being, we're not gonna go uh, into detail for this interpretation rules. Um, yeah, and also for the stable model, the ASP, we, know, we don't need to, to um, put the interpretation rule because the Klingo itself can solve that, right? So this is the idea for this work. And since it's been accepted here at Paddle for an extended abstraction, and the full paper, the full algorithm is uh, we, we have already uploaded to the archive. So it, it can be found under the same title. So um, if you are interested in this, please reference that one. Okay, um, thank you. I think this is uh, what we have today. Thank you so much. Okay, so if people have questions um, uh, remotely, then please type them into the Q&A section, section on Airmeet. And if you want to ask a question live, put live somewhere very obvious in the, in the, in the question. All right, um, do we have any questions in the room? All right, in which case, I, I've got a question, which is that the, these graphs um, reminded me an awful lot of uh, Petronet. Um, so I was wondering if there's some comparison there, and if you could like reuse any of the results about Petronet. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, sir. Um, could you repeat the, uh, the the question again? So it's kind of yeah. Uh, the, the, your graphs reminded me a lot of Petronet. Um, mm -hmm. So I was wondering if this, like you could do some comparison with with Petronet, or. Like we use any of the techniques from them? Oh, uh, actually, uh, we just uh, got uh, transformed from the conventional dependency graph directly. So, um, what we applied was just apply the Morgan's law to negate the conjunctive relationship to solve the um, uh, the problem for the conventional. Uh, dependency graph representation to show the conjunctive relationships. So that 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 is the uh, um, basic idea for the graph representation. So, yeah. Mm. All right. Any yeah. other questions in the room? All right. Okay. Um, Amy is going to log me out. So <laughs> hang on. <laughs> I will log back in. Yeah. See whether are, are there any questions on there? chat yeah there is one question actually. all right okay so um so we have a, a question from jason morris um, um would this approach simplify applying models to data stored in graph-based data models uh, like graph-based databases yeah that's a good question actually uh we are trying to do our next step which is to try to apply uh, make some application based on our graph-based 
uh, algorithms. So this research actually is not uh, alone. We have uh, some other um, things related with this graph representation. We have our graph-based answer set programming solvers, actually. We have two versions of it, and we also had a application um, on, uh, of our graph-based solving system on the social boat, social boat applications. So actually we are planning to try to find more application scenarios for our graph-based idea. So the graph-based databases is definitely gonna be a target, yeah. So I think we should thank the speaker again.